All right, in this video, I'm going to show you Impulse, and it's one of the two instruments that Ableton has for drums. This is the simpler of the two, but it's still really powerful and really easy to use. So the first thing you notice when you drag in, you're going to find your uh, Impulse instrument in the Instruments section here. And under Impulse here, you can drag this in, and that will give you an empty slate, which means there's no sounds in it already. Or you can go with a preset. So you could choose between the different presets here. And this is a great new feature with Ableton 9, is that it will preview the sounds for you. So let's just go with this one here. So I'll just drag it onto the top in the title area. And there we go, we've got our preset. Now, if you're still using Ableton 8, you'll be able to find your instruments here. And first you're gonna click this area here. So you got, you got MIDI effects, audio effects, and instruments all in this section here. And then under instruments, you'll just open up the folder find your impulse and be able to drag it in. So once you've got your your impulse preset in here, you can uh, listen to your sounds either on a keyboard, uh, starting with your middle C on your keyboard, or you could use your QWERTY keyboard and you can use the A, S, D, F, G, H, J, and K keys to run through the sounds, so just like so. And if you're not getting any sound when you play that, probably one of the reasons is you don't have uh, this turned on up here, your little keyboard thing. And if you still aren't hearing sound, then that might mean that your, your keyboard is uh, on an octave that's not correct. And you could change the octave uh, by hitting either the Z key to go to a lower octave or the X key to go to a higher octave. So if you just shift to the lowest octave up to the highest, you'll eventually come across your kick on your A key. So now that I've got my kit in here, let's say I, I like the sounds for the most part, but I'd like to change the kick and the snare sound. That's really extremely simple here. You could either do a search, and this works for both uh, Ableton 8 and 9, although the Ableton 9 search engine is a lot faster. So I could just search kick, and let me go to uh, samples. And here we go. We've got a bunch of kick sounds already loaded in. I like that. So I'll grab this 606 kick, and then I'll, um, I'm gonna go into my samples folder here. Now, in Ableton 9, you can create multiple folder areas by just hitting Add Folder, and then choosing the lo location that you want to add. Or if you're in Ableton 8, you got three folder locations here, and you can browse through any of those. And wherever you put them will be saved for the next time you use them. So let's go ahead and find a snare now. So I'm just gonna go over Let's uh, get rid of the kick here, and I will find in my samples folder, I've got some snares here. Okay, so let's just go with this one here. And now, uh, now that these are dragged into these cells, I've got the sounds. So now that the sounds are in here, we can do quite a bit of editing to the sounds still. We can uh, affect the start point here. Okay, let me try on the snare here. So here's our snare. Oops. You can hear it takes some of the bite out of the beginning when I use the start. Transpose. And here's a stretch, so if I go all the way backwards, it's gonna make that sample shorter. If I stretch it, it's going to obviously stretch it and make it longer. 
so you could drastically change the sound of your snare. Cool. Now another thing that you can do is you could affect the velocity. And that actually this is this velocity is set to the transpose here. So the louder the harder you hit the note, it's going to transpose to a different key. So a higher key, lower key, depending on where you're setting the level. You can set this to random to where no matter how you play, where you play, it'll just slightly vary the key. And I like to use a small percentage and it just gives like a very slight random sound which is a very cool effect. The velocity here will affect the stretch amount so if I take this to 100% at a low volume makes it real quick as the the key gets hit harder it'll actually be a longer stretch uh, drive is just uh, like a saturator. It just adds like a little bit of distortion and with a kick that can be pretty effective too. Filter is great. You've got uh, three different types of filters. You've got a low pass, high pass, and uh, band pass. Oh, actually you've got the notch as well. So if I go to a low pass here, oh, let me just click here. So I'll set it to low pass, and now you'll only hear the real super low. And then as you open it up, it'll open up more. And then the higher the resonance means kind of there's there's more, uh, you hear that little high note? That's the, the resonance point. So at that point, it's pushing the volume of, of that frequency up louder. High pass does the opposite, and if I take the resonance down, let's go ahead and uh, try that on the snare. Very cool. Uh, the band pass basically sets the EQ right around this. Uh, crossing point. So a lot of different sound design options here. Things can be controlled by the velocity. So for example, if I set uh, to a high pass and then play with the velocity, the lower velocity is less intense. And the higher velocity uh, brings the frequency up. And then, of course, your random uh, will randomize uh, what's being played, either slightly or drastically, depending on the percentage. Now, the decay is just the amount of time that the sample will play. Let's set it to trigger. As you can hear, it's not playing anything. And as I open it up, all the way open. So with a gate, let me show you the difference here. Let me drag in a, a longer sample to show you how the gate works. Okay, I'm just gonna drag this in. Okay, so if the gate is on, what that means is this is how long it will play after you let go of the key. So. If I hold it down longer, so that it's going to play for as long as I hold the key down, and then it'll release. When I release it, it's going to stop in five milliseconds, or I can set it to uh, one and a half seconds, and it kind of slowly fades out. Whereas with trigger, this is how much of the sample it's going to play. So you're not going to hear anything at five milliseconds when I hit play. But as I bring up 
the decay amount, it'll play more of the sample. So that's how the uh, trigger and the gate work. And I'll just uh, drag in a, a snare again here. Panning, obviously, you know, just left and right panning. Uh, no mystery about that. Velocity can affect the location of the panning by how hard you hit. It can affect whether it's more over to the right or more over to the left. Random, of course, will just randomize what's happening where a low percentage is going to be very slight and a high percentage is going to be much more noticeable. And volume velocity is obviously related here to the volume. So if you set your velocity high, how hard you hit the key will be how loud the sound is. And I think that's a really important way to make your drum programming sound pretty natural. Then overall, you've got uh, timing here. And overall, you've got transpose, so you can transpose the whole kit. And you could, timing is, is kind of basically just like the stretch over here. You can kind of stretch the whole kit, or you can tighten it up. And the M and the S is basically just muting and soloing each part. So if I click on the snare here, that will mute the sound so it doesn't play. And solo means that that will be the only sound that you hear playing. Okay, so now that you have your kit put together here, the next thing obviously that you want to do is be able to program a drum beat. And there's a couple different ways to do that. Now with any MIDI file in your session window, you could double click in an empty square here and make a new clip like so. And it's just going to default to one bar. Down here if you want, you could change it to four bars like so, and now it's a four bar loop. I'll just bring it back to one bar though. And then I could turn on the metronome here. You want to make sure your track down here is armed in order to record. And then it's ready to record. So I'm just going to play right on the keyboard. And let's see, uh, throw in. I didn't like that, so I'm just going to highlight these and just hit delete. And I can't hear the hi hats here, so let's go in here and. Okay, so we could hear it's a little bit off, but we'll fix that. And I could turn off the metronome now and kind of... And the tambourine sounds like it's doing something pretty random, so I can come back over find my tambourine and it looks like it's at 100% random. I'm going to bring that down quite a bit. And bring this down as well. And now what I can do is I can highlight these all, or you could just highlight one and hit Command A. If you right click, you get your quantize settings. So I'm going to quantize this to 16th notes here. And I'll just put this to 100% for this example. And it'll lock everything right into place. So now when I play it, it'll be on time. Great. So the next thing I want to do 
is I recorded this on my QWERTY keyboard so it was set to a low velocity so I'm going to set this to a higher velocity so that I can edit each of the parts and get more dynamics out of the sound. Let me go ahead and turn all these up here and now I can just highlight different parts and edit them so here are my hi-hats so I'll go ahead and highlight these and as you can see these all turn a dark red and I can kind of play with them all okay this tom here seems loud so I'll go ahead and control that here and the tambourine seems fine to me so what I'm going to do here is now I'll just click on individual hi-hats here and I'll kind of slightly raise and slightly lower different ones here and all I'm doing is I'm just clicking on these things and then dragging up or down and as you notice the darker colored red are going to be the louder parts and the lighter colors are going to be the quieter parts turn this one up a little bit this down just giving them a little bit of variation which helps with the dynamics and I might even uh, make the first snare a little bit lower and let the second one be a, a bit higher give it a little bit more dynamic in that as well great so now the next thing that we might want to do is create a, uh, a groove here because everything's now locked right on the beat since we quantized it so one trick that I do is I've already done this but I'll, let's do it again what I'll do is I'll take this MIDI part here and I'll just drag it in as it is into the groove window and then what I'll do is I'll take this now that it's analyzed the groove and I'll drag it back on to the clip so now everything's still going to be the same until I change some of these parameters here so all, the, all that I want to change here is just the random and that will set things uh, more humanistic so let me go ahead and show you as you can hear it's getting way off here but as I back this down to a reasonable level has a little bit more of a groove to it now because everything's not playing right on time so that's a little trick that I do to kind of add a little random variation so that's your one way of recording you know just recording directly in now if you're in Ableton 8 you're not going to click up here to start your recording what you'll do is you'll you'll just hit arm your track and click on this and it will either be in overdub mode or it'll be in record mode and let me show you that right here so right here this is overdub mode meaning uh, as you're recording it will continue to overdub so you could continue to add layers as you go and when this is turned off you can you're able to audition different parts that you want to add but it won't record so that's how you shift between the two in Ableton 8 now in Ableton 9 the way it works is let me just start a new clip here I'm not going to play anything but just as, as an example we will go ahead and hit the record to start and as you can see this uh, icon is turned red if I come up here and I click this again it'll turn this off and now I can audition sounds but as you can see they will not record in here so you could kind of be making a beat then you could turn this off audition the sounds that you want to play and then turn it back on and that's how you would record things live now the next approach is to just 
enter it in with a double click. So by double clicking in any of these areas, you can actually just draw in your drum parts. And over time, you'll get familiar with how everything is. Uh, each one of these shades here is represents a quarter note. So that's a good way to know where to put your kick drums if you're going for just a straight 4-4 rhythm. But it also gives you just, for any drum part that you make, it gives you a, an easier way to see where you're at. So if I were to just draw in, I could just And another thing that I could do is if I want to duplicate this, I just highlight it, hit Command and D. So now that these are in, I can go in and I can adjust these. Like so. So create some really good dynamics. And once again, you could drag in, drag this into the groove pool and drag back up. Or you can go and highlight different sections. Now you could either highlight all your parts and quantize them, or you could just say, oh, I want to put a little shuffle to these uh, hi-hats, let's say. So I'm going to highlight those, right click, quantize settings. And a little trick I like to do is I We'll set it to a 16th or 8th note triplet. And I'll just shuffle it a little bit. So let's try 20%. That might be too much, but we'll see. I kind of like that. Let's uh, do a little bit more just so I could show you. What it's doing is it's, it's moving it towards a triplet instead of a, a straight rhythm. So that, that variance in between can give it a little bit of a groove. So let's go to 35% or 34%. So that gives things a, a real nice groove and feel. So there's a lot of different ways to add some groove and feeling, even if you're entering in the notes kind of block by block. Another approach to entering in notes, I just don't use it very often, is the pencil tool. And with the pencil tool, you just single click to enter a note, single click to get rid of it. So if that's faster for you, then you can grab the pencil tool and go ahead and do that. So that's Ableton's Impulse.